everyone, and welcome to the Dr. Janine Show. I'm so happy to have you all here today. Guess what we're talking about? Yes, we're talking about fake bottled water. Have you been duped? Are you drinking the wrong stuff? We're going to talk about healthier water sources as well, especially for that weight loss. So that's important. And we're talking and we will be making, yes, I know that this is something you have been asking for, my remineralizing natural toothpaste remedy, okay? You will absolutely love this recipe. We're gonna be making this and I'm gonna share that recipe with you. It helps to whiten your teeth as well, helps to have less cavities. Amazing, amazing recipe for this, okay? So that is coming up. Please say hello and where you're from. It's great to be here today on this nice Tuesday. Hopefully it's nice and healthy and sunny where everybody is please let me know where you're from as well it's great to have you here now we're talking a little bit about something that I haven't talked about in a few years now and that's deuterium do you know what deuterium is all about and how that can be leading to more problems with your overall health so mitochondrial damage as well as slowing down your energy and causing weight gain so we're talking about deuterium and what things we kind of need to be looking for in our healthy water sources okay and of course we last week if you missed us we did talk about fake B vitamins we talked about that fake vitamin B6 I hope you've been checking your vitamin bottles out at home we also did the oil pulling exercise for bright and white teeth as well so I hope that you've been trying that and we talked about tips for depression and moving up that emotional guidance scale so if you missed last week's show make sure you check it out in long form types of video. Yes, I've got a wine bottle back here. We'll be talking about this as well. And of course, coming back to, yeah, how do we help with that weight loss or just managing and balancing your overall body composition is something that we're talking about as well today because you know that I'm all about detoxification and this is why fluoride is such a big problem. In terms of fluoride toxicity, there's so many different sources of that fluoride that you may not have been aware about and this is the thing, that's why I like to educate you so that you get to know the good information about how you can really empower yourself over your own body. Hello and nice to see you. Ciao from beautiful South Florida. Nice to have you here, Ellen. Thank you for tuning in today. Great to have you here. And Gozen is here in Toronto. Nice to have you here. Christy in sunny Seattle. Great to have you here as well. And Rosy in Mel West Melbourne, Florida. 85 degrees with sun. Oh my goodness. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I will be, yes, I will be announcing our winner from last week as well. So make sure you're staying tuned for that. Of course, this is a very interactive show. We have a lot of quiz questions coming up. So it's very interactive. You have the ability to win a prize from our great sponsors at VitaTree Nutritionals. We're playing for the calcium today, the calcium powder. And guess what? That is a requirement for one of our recipes today. So this is something that you definitely want to stay, stick around for and stay tuned. Thank you, Jerry, for sharing today's live. Thank you for being here. Hey, everybody, if you want more natural medicine and tips and information, please hit that share button as well as make sure that you are subscribed and that you're following as well. It's great to have you all here today. Okay, let's talk first about that bottled water. And we've got problems with a lot of bottled water out there, which a lot of people don't realize. So back in 2007, they did an analysis and almost half of all bottled water on the planet that people are buying and paying money for was actually just plain old tap water. And we know how I feel about tap water and all those contaminants, depending on where you live. Some places are worse than others. And we're going to talk about fluoride in water as well, which is another contaminant. Yeah, as much as, you know, it, we're led to believe that this is something for our dental health, it's actually a contaminant. So we will be talking about that. But back in 2007, Two of the big bottled water companies, I know a lot of you drink bottled water and especially from the microplastics and the plastic bottles, not the best, had to change their labels because of labeling laws because it, they made it seem like it was not tap water and it was actually tap water. So really read your labels. Some of my tips here, if you are purchasing water and bottled water, really quickly, and we're going to come back to this and I've got a, a few more details, but really quickly in terms of water, you want to look for something that's actually bottled at the source. Okay, now the source is going to be different as well. We're going to talk about that later when we're talking about some other issues with deuterium, but it should label actually where that source is and the location, there should be some kind of address that you could look it up on a map that that place actually exists. And then it's, if it is actually a spring water, that's a pure spring water. Avoid, of course, seeing fluoride 
on that label whenever you can. Now, fluoride is naturally occurring in groundwater, so often it's going to be in a bottled water, but you want those parts per million to be quite small, trying to avoid that fluoride. And that's what we're talking about today is fluoride toxicity. And that's why you got to stick around for my fluoride-free remineralizing toothpaste recipe that is coming up today. Hello. Great to have you all here. Irene, I will be talking about best waters to look for and what you should be looking for in a healthy water, especially for weight loss if you're trying to lose weight. And Blaze Structured Water. Yes, absolutely. So I just discovered yesterday, actually, that the UK Daily Mail actually featured me again. They've done it a few times now. So in the UK, who's in the UK? Put a one in the comments that I was featured there about my post on structured water. So who knew? So I had to look that up. Actually, my, my friends here at the Dr. Janine Show, they shared that with me. Amazing, amazing. So isn't that cool? Okay, good morning, Susan. Nice to have you here. Vicki, hello, good morning. Great to have you here. Andrea, Vanessa, Crystal as well. Lovely, is it lovely? Ari7, hello, great to have you here. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Now, let's go through some of the most common sources of fluoride that you may be ingesting every single day, okay? So let's look at number one on my list, sources of fluoride. And you may not have known, but yeah, I was doing this all the time, drinking tea. So black tea and green tea are very high in fluoride. So it's just the nature of the tea plant. The leaves actually pull up the fluoride from the soil. And this is a problem because I'm a tea drinker and this is something that I drink every morning. This is how I start my day, drinking tea. Now we know how I feel about these types of tea bags as well. The microplastics, so this is even worse if it's a black or green tea in this type of you know, mesh tea bag, microplastics that you're gonna be ingesting as well. So you don't wanna drink from this. You may reconsider actually drinking black or green tea because there are now lists that you can actually look up and you can put in your favorite tea and I'm gonna share that website in just a second, but fluoride in tea, black, green, white, herbal, and more, and you can search 357 different teas that are actually documented, and that is something that you're going to be able to, you know, look up the tea that you may be drinking, and that's a problem, okay? Now, another one, toothpaste. Now, not my toothpaste, because we're gonna be making my toothpaste in a little bit, but most toothpaste, if it says fluoride, is going to have Fluoride. So you want to start looking for a fluoride-free toothpaste. As well as if you're at the dentist's office, fluoride treatments, of course. And this is something that you are often, you know, not educated about, unfortunately, by the dentist, that there are toxicity concerns with doing those fluoride treatments. So you just have to say no thank you for your children. They don't do it so much for adults anymore. But yeah, it's something that you're just gonna have to stand your ground and do even a lot more research, you know, based on hopefully this is sort of like a jumping point for you to learn a lot more yourself and educate yourself about that fluoride toxicity. Please hit that share button. Thank you. Good morning, Shanna. It's nice to have you here. Or is it Shana? Uh, what kind of tea? So this is something that I'm going to share a website that you can look up the different teas. Herbal teas tend to be very low and if not have zero fluoride. So that's actually a good thing. And this is the conversion that I'm making now into more herbal teas because I just love my black tea. I love my green tea as well, but fluoride, I'm not sure that I want to, you know, weigh out the, you know, the negative effects of that with my own health. And we know, and we've talked about some of the issues that fluoride can cause for our overall metabolism. It slows down our thyroid function, which is a toxicity concern as well. Now, other... Sources of fluoride, of course, drinking water, so that tap water, and most of, I believe, and I'm going to share the stat in just a second, most of a huge majority, I think it's 74% of the drinking water in the USA is fluoridated. So they're dumping the fluoride. There's a backstory to that. I won't share it here, but yeah, there is a backstory as to why they're doing that. And you got to know that that tap water, if you're not filtering it or doing reverse osmosis, is going to have that fluoride. Another source, unfortunately, uh -huh, Teflon pans. So another reason to avoid those nonstick Teflon pans, they do contain fluoride. So please don't use these in your home. Start making those conversions as well to have a healthier meal. And of course, number six on the list is... Here we go, medication, something that we talked about last week. Let's review that list because there are a lot of 
medications and classes of medications that actually contain that fluoride. So we're going to do a little review really quickly. We will be making that toothpaste recipe in a, just a little bit, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget, we have our quiz questions as well. Okay, so let's go through. Cholesterol lowering pills, the statins, they contain fluoride. Antacids also have fluoride. Antibiotics, that flu clox is a big one. And really the hint here is whenever you see the word flu, so from fluoride in a medication generic name, you can pretty much be sure that that's got fluoride in it. Anti-anxiety meds like fluoxetine is a big one. Uh, Anti-inflammatories as well have a lot of fluoride, so it's something that you want to be aware of and lessen your exposure wherever you can. Now, I'm not saying to go off your medications, but for people you know, who have the ability to you know, lessen their exposure to these things, definitely is gonna be better for your health. But more importantly, I've got my fluoride detox tips today because I know you've been waiting for it. I I didn't let you in on all the detox tips last week for fluoride, so we're going to go through that. Okay, are we ready? It's already quiz question number one time. Now, if you're new here, please say hello, put a one in the comments. This is something that's so important and so fun that we do every week is that we have different quiz questions. And today we're playing for the calcium powder from our great friends at VitaTree Nutritionals. They are the sponsor of our show. And that's why I can come back here every week because they sponsor us to be able to come and speak and of course educate all of you. Now, it, the rules are pretty simple here. All you have to do is do your best, answer the quiz question as quickly as you can, put your answer into the comments and everybody who's even participating, so even if you don't know the answer, just try your best. Everybody who's participating will be chosen to be put into a random selector and to choose our winner every week. And I will be announcing last week's winner. Okay, are we ready? Is everybody ready? You gotta be quick on this one. You got 30 seconds. Once you see that question come up and the clock comes up. Are we ready? Here we go. Fluoride treatments are good for your health. This is a true or false. Put your answers in. All right. I saw a, number, a lot of number ones in there too. Okay. Awesome. There we go. Put your answer in. True or false. You got a 50-50 chance. Okay, here we go. Good job, good job. Everybody's getting your answers in. Uncle Louie is here, hello. Okay, awesome. Everybody getting your answers in. Four seconds left, three, two, and one. Okay, everybody hit that share button a few times before I reveal. Thank you so much, and make sure that you are subscribed. Hey, if you're tuning in for the first time, I'm Dr. Janine. We have a lot of fun here at the Dr. Janine Show. We talk all things natural and give you a lot of tips on how to get healthier. Okay, did everybody hit that share button? Yes, you did. Thank you so much. Victoria G, I see that you shared. Thank you so much. And Misty, thank you for following. It's great to have you here for the first time today. Okay, make sure that you're subscribed as well. All right, let's reveal fluoride treatments are not so good for your health. No, so the answer is false. Good job, everyone. Thank you for participating. We have a few more quiz questions coming up, so don't go anywhere. Let's announce last week's winner of the VitaTree Vitamin B12, and that was Carol H. Congratulations, Carol. Good job. Awesome, awesome. Now make sure you tune in next week. So when I announce next today's the winner from today's show, I will be announcing next week. All right. Now let's talk a little bit about those ticks tips. How do we get rid of that fluoride from our system? And I've got a bunch of tips. Now, another thing that we're going to be talking about is weight loss today. And something that you probably haven't even heard of, you probably don't even know about something called deuterium. We're going to be talking about deuterium toxicity and of course, how to avoid that deuterium. But let's talk about detoxing that fluoride out of our system because guess what? If you've got fluoride toxicity, remember one of the symptoms of fluoride toxicity is a lower thyroid function. It can actually shut down your thyroid and you can start gaining weight because you've got that fluoride toxicity, okay? So this is something that's really important. Let's go through some of the tips for that fluoride how to get it out of our system, because maybe you've been using fluoridated toothpaste for years. Maybe you drink tea in the morning for years, like I have. So it's something that you have to sort of start to change your mind about. I'm trying to tell myself and convince myself this is what I'm going to do. Okay, here we go. So number one, healthy diet, of course. Now, there's some foods that are actually higher in that fluoride. Unfortunately, grapes 
So if you love grapes, if you love raisins, they tend to be very high. The, the, the fruit itself draws a lot of fluoride into the fruit itself. Wine would be in here as well, especially if they're not organic. So eating a healthier diet, avoiding the foods that are high in that fluoride is important, okay? Number two is curcumin. Now it's interesting because there's research that actually shows that curcumin helps to pull that fluoride out of your body. And in this study, we can see that the findings show that exposure to fluoride can affect, of course, your kidney and liver function. And this is one of the reasons why curcumin, especially from that turmeric, in a high concentration is important because it helps with liver and kidney health. But here we see, remember I said earlier, 74% of public water systems in the US is fluoridated for, yeah, for dental health. Well, like I said, there's a backstory there. I'm not gonna share it here. Something that you can look into the research as to why they're dumping the fluoride into the drinking water. It's not, and especially the, the turmeric, so the curcumin is the active component of the turmeric, is really fantastic for liver gallbladder health, but this is important to know that it can help to pull that fluoride out of the system as well. Now this study reveals that curcumin is useful for ameliorating de degenerative effects of fluoride in mice brains. So when we talk about neurotoxicity, because this is one of the things that one of the problems with fluoride is that it gets into the brain and maybe throw me Lucy's brain for a second. Thank you. We're calling for a brain throw. Here we go. All right, there. So Lucy's brain. Yeah. So that neurotoxicity, that fluoride gets into the brain, especially if you've heard about the pineal gland and getting in there and causing calcifications. You may have heard about this before. There's a lot of videos that are out there, people doing videos about this topic. So this is really important that we're pulling that fluoride safely and effectively out of the body. This is why I love the curcumin for doing that. And make sure that you're looking for a 95 percentile of those curcuminoids. It's not enough to take just turmeric and add some turmeric root into your smoothies or making a juice with turmeric because that can be contaminated with lead. So that's why I actually take it in a standardized supplement that has that, thank you, that has that high concentration of those curcuminoids. Okay, so that's important. Okay, number three on the list, stop your exposure. So that goes without saying, I gave you the list of some of the exposures. We can come back to that, you know, towards the end. If you missed, if you're just tuning in right now, as to where we are getting and our sources of fluoride in our system, of course, the tea, green tea, black tea, fluoridated toothpaste, um, and dental treatments are big exposures, tap water as well. Okay, number four is iodine. So eating more seaweed, more seafood, iodine. Now remember that link to the fluoride with your thyroid gland. It's going to shut down your thyroid gland. And that's because it's a halogen. Now all the halogens, if you remember from the periodic table, they're in that group. Fluoride and iodine are in that halogen group. And unfortunately, fluoride is going to kick out the iodine. It is preferential on the receptor site. So the iodine loses that battle. That's why our thyroid can be suppressed and not working properly because of that fluoride toxicity. And this can go both ways here, okay? So for people who have hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism, so over-functioning, under-functioning thyroid can be li linked back to this fluoride toxicity. So that's why it's really, really important to get a handle on this. So that iodine seaweed, I like, I actually take a thyroid supporting supplement that has the kelp um, in there, which is amazing, a natural source of that iodine, okay? So optimizing your iodine, really important. Okay, number five, Calcium, magnesium, vitamin D3. So calcium in particular helps to bind fluoride, helps to even take it out of the pineal gland. So this is really important. This can actually affect your dreams by taking the right type of calcium. My preferred type is a coral calcium. Taking that closer to bedtime can help to pull that fluoride out of especially the, the wrong places like the pineal gland and can really affect your dreams. Yeah, it is amazing. Something that I personally experienced, which is amazing. Magnesium, vitamin D3, we knew that they all work together. And of course, your vitamin K2 is important. When do we take our vitamin K2? Does everybody know? Tell me when we take vitamin K2. Morning or night? Who knows? Who's been following me for a while? I was on TV all last week um, for three days straight, the marathon. I was talking a lot about vitamin K2. And yes, here we go. Um, all right. Yes, yes, yes. Raina got it. Raina got it. And she, I saw that she got it first. Leanne also had a JDV. Kathy, of course. Uncle Louie. You guys all know my Gloria. Yes, you guys have been following for a while. You know the protocol, right? So K vitamin K2 should be here as well. And that goes with your calcium closer to bedtime. Amazing for pouring, pulling that fluoride out. Okay. Now, number six on the list, 
organic coffee and herbal tea. So coffee is lower in fluoride than teas. Who knew? Yeah, so here's another reason why maybe drinking coffee may be good, you know, for some people. Yeah, <laughs> everybody loves their coffee. And herbal teas don't have fluoride. So it's just the Camellia sinensis plant, so the black and green tea. So from that plant tends to concentrate the fluoride. So it's something to think about. Now when it's organic, and if it's an organic green or black tea, usually it's better, but I've looked at that, that website and let's, um, May, are we sharing that website now? No, in a little bit. Okay, but there is a website called, yeah, it's in the, gonna be in the description of the video. It's called truthaboutfluoride.com and you can check out there, you know, look up the tea that you drink. 357 are, are listed and have been evaluated for that fluoride toxicity. Truthaboutfluoride.com, okay, you can check it out and, and yeah, there we go, truth about fluoride. So just, you can, they have a table, you can punch in your tea and see how much fluoride is in there. You might be shocked, okay, in your tea. All right, they also have one for coffee. So coffee brands too, so you can look that up. Okay, number seven, reverse osmo osmosis is a great way to get that fluoride out of your water, your drinking water. If you are drinking tap water, if it's treated with and gone through that process of reverse osmosis, that will help to take the fluoride out, okay? Number eight is doing that full body detox. So this is why I'm all about getting those toxins out of your body so that you feel better, whether that's for weight loss, whether that's for the gas and bloating, your gut health, you got to help to get that fluoride out as well. And number nine on the list, of course, is your third eye meditation. So remember that pineal gland is very important and that pineal gland can get calcified from having too much fluoride in your system. So you want to be able to do, and this is really important in terms of your third eye, your ability, now let's talk mind-body for just a second, that mind-body connection, your ability to have your intuition. When your third eye is open, you can see things that aren't necessarily there in the physical, but you have an intuition about things. And this can really help you in your life, whether that's for finances, relationships, you know, your job prospects, it, could, it can be anything. You just get good and maybe not so good feelings about things and intuitions about things. And if you follow that intuition, it takes you to the next level of your healthier and better life, okay? So that's why doing some meditation around this area, if you're into that, amazing for clearing out that, some of that fluoride toxicity as well. Now, okay, let's continue. I hope you're loving this. Thank you and hello, Ahmed from UK. Nice to have you here today. Thank you for tuning in, Jazzy Girl. I know I love my tea as well. I know, I know. But it may be something that maybe you just got to do more on the detox side of things and still drink, keep drinking your tea. I don't know. It's up to you. But I think that, you know, limiting your exposure. So whether you're drinking the tea, you're drinking, you know, the tap water as well. Maybe you're drinking a little bit too much of the vino that could have the fluoride as well just be more aware and certainly going for organic might be a little bit better. Now, what else could be affecting your weight? So when we turn to excess body fat, and one of the things that you may have never heard about and never talked about is something called deuterium, and that can be affecting your weight. Now, what is deuterium? Well, deuterium is heavy hydrogen. And we know that water, of course, when we look at hydrogen has and water is H2O, right? So hydrogen only has a proton and no neutron, okay? But heavy hydrogen actually is heavier. It's physically heavier because it has a neutron and that's the heavy hydrogen. So there's something to say about deuterium in our water and the water that you're drinking or some of the foods that you're eating could be higher in deuterium and that can slow down your ATP synthase. And this is in your mitochondria, it's something that makes your energy. Now if you're not making energy, you could be making more body fat. So that's a very simplified way of looking at it. Also, deuterium also messes up, so that heavy hydrogen messes up protein folding as well. So your enzyme systems and your metabolism in general can be messed up, your low energy, and this then actually can lead to disease. So deuterium is very much linked to cancer. So we have to be very aware of our deuterium consumption and the fact that our body actually makes its own deuterium depleted water. You may have heard of deuterium depleted water, DDW. Put DDW if you've heard of deuterium depleted water in the comments. Just put DDW if you've heard of that. If you know what that's all about, 
But this is important that your body actually makes its own deuterium depleted water, which is healthy. It needs natural sunlight to be able to do it. Ha ha, hello, aha moment for everybody who knows that I, I the other day my youngest son said, mom, what is it with you, the sun, the sun, the sun? Because I keep telling the kids, get outside, you have to get some sun. Yeah. This is so important. That's how your body's making that deuterium depleted water. You need that natural sunlight is part of this, but also certain dietary changes to help with making more of that deuterium depleted water and less exposure to deuterium, especially to lose that weight is what we're talking about today. Okay, so let's talk about, and we're gonna continue that conversation in just a second. I do wanna share my viewer spotlight. So I do wanna say thank you to Charlotte and Charlotte said, thank you so much for your channel. I have learned so much from you and I'm starting to make myself healthy. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, Charlotte. I appreciate all of your wonderful feedback, all of your comments. We have a huge list going on of all the great comments from our viewers, but this is who we chose this week. So thank you, Charlotte, so much for the great news. Now, continuing on, how do we lower that deuterium to get that weight off. Maybe you can pass me the, the fat again. Mr. Fat, okay, Lucy, how's your fat today? Let's see, yeah. This is how we have to get this deuterium out of our system, out of our organs. We've got to help to stimulate that weight loss. How are we doing it? How and what are my tips to lower that deuterium for more energy and helps your mitochondrial health as well. Now, don't forget my toothpaste remedy is and recipe is coming up. We're going to be mixing up that toothpaste, remineralizes, whitens your teeth without fluoride, of course, because we're talking fluoride toxicity as well today. Okay, tips to lower deuterium. Number one, increase healthy fats. So the more healthy fats that you're eating in your diet, the more deuterium depleted water you actually make. And this is why the keto diet for a lot of people is very healthy and you can reverse a lot of health conditions in you know, the right season and doing keto in the right way can be very healthy because your body makes 1.1 kilos of deuterium depleted metabolic water for every one kilo of fat that you're consuming. So isn't that interesting? And this is one of the reasons, did you know that camels, they survive off of what's in their humps? It's fat. So they're making deuterium depleted water and they can go long periods of time without actually physically drinking water in the desert because they're making deuterium depleted water from the fat in their humps. Okay, isn't that interesting? So think about that. So of course, healthy fats in your diet, things like avocado oil, coconut oil, Fantastic. Olive oil, which you know I love because of the polyphenols, ghee, butter, nuts and seeds. These will all help you to make more of that metabolic water and that will help with your overall metabolism. Okay, number two on the list is to increase your grass-fed meats. If you are, of course, not a vegetarian um, and grass-fed is always going to be better because the feed for the animal, the grass, is going to be lower in deuterium than some of the grain-fed animals. Okay, so that's important. Number three, wild caught fish. So yeah, farmed fish, unfortunately, has the complication of the feed that they're giving to the fish for farmed salmon, as an example, is higher in deuterium. So that is gonna translate into more deuterium being in the fish. So you don't wanna do that. Whenever you can, wild caught fish is gonna be much healthier, as is number four on the list, which of course is free range poultry. So free range poultry is gonna be lower in deuterium because of course it's roaming free and pasture raised is something that we should have put here as well. So pasture raised naturally eating, you know, the bugs and things on the ground and not always grain fed because grain fed is gonna be higher in deuterium, okay? So here we go. Please hit that share button. Thank you to everybody who's here today. And thank you for all the love coming in. And of course, all of those hearts and all those, and thank you for sharing. Yes, I see WMR Plants 53 is sharing like three, four, five times. Thank you so much. Gabe, thank you for following. And make sure that you are following, that you are subscribed, especially when you're wanting more information like what I'm sharing. I know for a lot of people, deuterium, it's the first time you've ever heard of this. You've, I, did anybody put DDW in the comments? I didn't even see it. Um, great to have you here. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Dr. Janine. Let's continue. Tips to lower your deuterium. Again, green leafy veggies tend to be lower in deuterium as opposed to the fruits. So the fruits of a plant are going to concentrate more of that deuterium. And here's one of the reasons, which is often not talked about, why lower carb diets, so lower fruits, lower starchy vegetable types of diets help people to lose weight is because it's lower in deuterium. So is it really about the sugar? 
or is it about the deuterium in those fruits and vegetables that's the problem? I think it's a combination of both, okay? So deuterium is a problem, and the green leafies are very low in deuterium, so this is gonna be healthier for you. And number six, limit your grains. Unfortunately, the grains, and this is why people don't do so well on grains, especially when you're trying to lose weight, is that grains are very high in that deuterium as well. And number seven, avoid synthetic supplements. Aha, uh -huh. so this is a whole other discussion, something that we will continue this conversation maybe even next week about synthetic versus natural whole food supplements. Whole food supplements, of course, come from nature, and they're not gonna have that same concentration of deuterium as synthetic ones that are driven up and made up and cooked up in a lab. They're gonna be higher in deuterium. Another source of deuterium that you didn't even know, and that could be why you're gaining the weight, you didn't even think about it was that deuterium content. Okay, everybody loving this? I hope so. Let me throw this back to you. Thank you. All right, we're going over here for quiz question number two, everyone. All right, so if you're new here, welcome on in. This is quiz question number two. So we play for prizes. Yes, this will be sent to you at no cost from our great sponsors at Vitatree Nutritionals. We thank them for making the Dr. Janine show possible in the first time, in the first place. Great to have them as our sponsor, and we're so appreciative to have them. Okay, so that's what you're playing for. All you have to do is answer the question. It's gonna come up behind me on the board. You've got 30 seconds on the clock once you see that question. Here, let's see who is paying attention. All right, are we ready? Quiz question number two. What is heavy hydrogen called? Okay, everybody put your answers in. You got 30 seconds on the clock. Good luck, everyone. Okay, we've got 18 seconds left. Is anybody getting it? Oh, and spelling is correct. All right. All right, good job, everyone. You got four seconds left. Just try your best. Spelling doesn't count, it's okay. Yeah, okay, good, Susan, I like the, the abbreviation. Good, good, good. What is heavy hydrogen called before I reveal I'll give you a few more seconds. Make sure you hit that share button as well. Oh my goodness, so many great participants here. Sass Beach, aha, uh -huh, yes, here we go. Nice answers, good job. Superman is here as well. Superman is here, all right. Everybody got their answers in. And you hit that share button. Thank you. Okay, let's reveal. It is deuterium, yes, that is heavy hydrogen. It's a problem for our mitochondrial nanomotors, for down our energy production, and for cancer and all kinds of bad stuff, okay? So that deuterium you want, because some of the, you know, what are touted as healthy foods are not always the healthiest, and some of them might make a little bit of sense to you, because, yeah, You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, and I want you to try to guess what number one is. Okay, so we're gonna work our way from six to one. Something that I've talked about that I got a lot of commenting on on this video that a lot of people were shocked. And I'll give you a hint. It's, it's touted as something healthy that a lot of people drink that's really healthy is number one, highest in deuterium. Okay, it's, it's really bad. <laughs> so we're gonna get there. Okay, let's start with number six. This is at 141 parts per million of deuterium. We're at with oats, okay? So that's not always maybe the healthiest food choice. Now, if it's gonna be organic and made with like a reverse, uh, that's how I make the oatmeal at home, an organic oats made with reverse osmosis water so there's no fluoride and hopefully less deuterium in there, that is gonna be a better way to do it, but oats, pretty high in deuterium. Remember, it's a grain. So remember, grains tend to be high in deuterium. Okay, number five on the list, unfortunately for me, because I love potatoes. Yes, there we go. Also high in deuterium. So 143 parts per million. Maybe I'll put the numbers in for you so you, you have some context. And it's 141 parts per million ppm of deuterium. Okay, number four on the list. Is anybody guessing what number one is? Okay, we've got a couple. Yes? Oh, yeah, okay, good. Uh -huh. I'm not going to reveal yet. Everybody's guessing what number one is. Okay, number four on the list is beets and beet sugar. Okay, so this is at 146. So we're climbing up there in parts per million of Deuterium, not great, okay? So you can see how some of the sweeter things are grains. 
Um, not so great because they actually concentrate that deuterium. Please hit that share button. Thank you so much. And thank you for all those likes and all the love coming in. I know a lot of people are actually guessing and you know what that number one food, which is the worst, of course, for deuterium content. And I see some other, Andrea, I like that answer. It's not the one that I was, but that is true. Okay, number three on the list, uh-huh, wheat. So this is why, okay, so a lot of people who have a gluten problem, is it really a deuterium problem? I'm just asking the question, right? You don't feel well with wheat, and when you're eating wheat, is it really gluten sensitivity, or is it a deuterium problem that's messing up your nanomotors, causing the gas and bloating, and you're tired all the time, and you're gaining weight? Is it deuterium? Good question, right? Okay, number two is, ooh, Yep, a lot of people have issues with corn. Again, high in deuterium. It's 155. Let me give you the numbers here. So this was 150 parts per million, and this is 155 parts per million of deuterium. That's high, okay? Because seawater is one of the highest sources of deuterium, and it's at 155. So to be ingesting it at that high amount of deuterium, this is a problem. That's why a lot of people actually, if you're eating popcorn, and you're thinking, oh, this is great for me. I'm, you know, I should be able to lose weight. No, not so much. Or you're having corn tortillas, or you're, eating, and it's not organic, and it's GMO on top of that, and glyphosate. Oh my goodness! Like, <laughs> stop me now. I know my everybody, my kids are always like, mom, mom, yes, yes. This is what we need to know because. I'm not saying never to eat corn again. I still eat popcorn once in a while, but just make those choices with, you know, some of this information at the back of your mind, because especially if you're not feeling well, if your energy is low, you've got gas and bloating, and you've got, you know, you're trying to lose weight, may not be the best idea to eat these high deuterium foods. Okay, number one, I know a lot of you got it. It's that health drink that's touted to be, I think it was Madonna first that popularized this drink. Probably, I'm going to say, oh, what, 15, maybe even 20 years ago that it was like all the rage and yeah, they couldn't harvest enough of this. Does everybody know what it, I'm talking about? Yeah, coconut water, okay? Coconut water is not a health food. It is not healthy. It The coconut... Concentrate. So the flesh of the coconut, the coconut oil, low in deuterium, okay? But the water is where the deuterium is at. It's 156 parts per million or more of deuterium, okay? So that is something that you definitely, not coconuts, but the coconut water is a problem in terms of that deuterium. So screenshot that list really quickly so that you've got that. And it is very interesting because if you're wanting, and I'm going to talk now about the best water to be drinking, especially if you're trying to lose weight or, you know, free up your nanomotors for lower deuterium, making sure that your body's making more energy, preventing disease, this is something that you definitely want to decrease your deuterium exposure. But let's go through the list really quickly of some of the best types of drinking water. Okay, so now this is number one. Yeah, we can show it. Okay, so a mountain spring. So a spring water that comes from high in the mountains, and this is where the structured water, I know we, some people were commenting about structured water earlier today. That structured water, because when natural sunlight is hitting that water, that water is flowing over rocks from the mountain spring, it's melting down, is the lowest in deuterium. So if you can find a bottled water that's from a mountain spring, amazing. Number two, glacier springs, glacier water, also fantastic, okay? So it is naturally deuterium depleted. And number three, this is important, that's more inland. So if you're close to the coasts, not so good, there's more, de more deuterium there, you want to have, be more inland in terms of that source of that water, okay, which is amazing. Make sure that you're hitting that subscribe button. Thank you if you're new here. Please make sure that you're following, especially <coughs> if you love to learn about natural medicine, you wanna learn more natural medicine tips. I'm Dr. Janine, great to have you here today. I know there's so many new people. Thank you for sharing today's live as well. There's so much love here when we come together on Tuesday. So every Tuesday we gather for the Dr. Janine show at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Set your reminder for next week where we will gather again. We have different topics every single week. There you go. And of course, join me tomorrow as well. So tomorrow we have our Q&A. So we spend some time at 1 p.m. So it's a little bit later, 1 p.m. tomorrow Eastern Standard Time. That's the Q&A. You have the ability to ask me some questions. I will do my best to answer as many as possible. 
And we're going to talk about some of the things that we talked about in today's show because I can't always get to all your questions when we are live during the Tuesday show. Okay, so that make sure you tune in tomorrow at 1 p.m. All right, another one. Make sure it's in a glass bottle whenever you can. So you know how I feel about those microplastics. And glass is always going to be better if you are purchasing bottled water. And another tip is make sure that it's bottled at the source. So a good high quality water is going to say that it's bottled at the source. And like we said earlier, it should actually give you the address, the location of where that source is at, something that you can look up on a map and say, okay, there is actually a water source there. Okay, so that's important. Take a quick screenshot of this and we're gonna continue the conversation. And I do want to say thank you in the meantime to my super fan. So thank you to everybody who is so generous throughout the show. So when I am live throughout the week as well with all of your donations, you guys are the best. Love the fact that, you know, you're so supportive of, you know, the show and, you know, the fact that I share a lot of information. I do a lot of research, of course, and share the best of the best information so that you can get healthier, of course, from the inside out in mind, body, and spirit. That's what we do here at the Dr. Jeanine Show. So I appreciate all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you to my super fans. Okay, it's time. We're making the remineralizing toothpaste. Oh my goodness, one of my favorite things ever. We've got it here. And this is just such a game changer in terms of your dental health. Now last week we did talk about the oil pulling. So I hope some of you are trying that, which is amazing for whitening the teeth. Now this is takes it up to the next level. And the fact that you can actually remineralize your teeth because of what's in here, and it has the whole food calcium. So a coral calcium powder is in the formulation, which actually helps to deposit that calcium back into the teeth. So if you have sensitivity in the teeth, if you tend to have cavities for your kids as well, hey, if you want to whiten and brighten your teeth, this is the best natural remedy which you are and recipe that you're going to love. Okay, let's mix this up. Is everybody ready for this? And then we're going to show you the recipe in a second behind me, but let's focus here first. Okay, so what we're starting with is that whole food calcium powder. So this again from our great sponsors at VitaTree, we thank them. Now this is a fossilized above sea level coral calcium, okay? And we're going to use eight teaspoons of this into our bowl and I'm going to speed this up again. There we go. So this has the ability because of that high concentration of calcium and the other minerals, this is going to help with remineralizing the teeth. Okay. So you need all of that calcium. Then you're using some baking soda. So just three teaspoons of baking soda and that helps to whiten and brighten the teeth, but also helps with the pH in the mouth um, because it is very alkaline. So that's great when you've got bad bacteria and things in the mouth, as well as xylitol. Now it's four teaspoons of xylitol, which is a natural sweetener. Now I know if you have pets, you don't have xylitol usually in your home, and I totally get that. You don't have to use the xylitol, so you just leave it out of the recipe, okay? But for everybody else, or, or if you're okay and you have a safe way of storing your xylitol, so your pets can't get into it, then you can use the xylitol, which is amazing. And that, again, is going to restore the pH in the mouth. It helps with killing off the bad bacteria in the mouth. So four teaspoons of the xylitol powder. And I'm just going to swish that around, mix that up a little bit. And then so that the, all your dry ingredients are incorporated. And then you're going to add in your coconut oil. Okay, so you're using four teaspoons of coconut oil. And let me use a fresh spoon. And you can see that mine is quite solid at the studio temperature, at room temperature right now. So what you can do is you can melt it down a little bit if you're in a colder climate and you want to sort of work this in a little bit more easily. But over time, as I add some friction and as I'm actually mixing this, this is where it becomes the consistency of toothpaste, which is amazing. So I'm going to have to work this a little bit, so bear with me. So as you work this down, you mix, 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 
And if you want to put this over a double boiler, you could in a little bit of bowl of, you know, warmer water. As you know, with the solidified coconut oil, those saturated fats, they will eventually melt down. And as I have that mixed, eventually what you come to is, and I like to store this either in a glass container or you can purchase these little tubes online and you have your toothpaste. So eventually it's gonna come down into a toothpaste consistency and it's a bit cold in the studio and then you're gonna use this on your toothbrush. It is amazing. Let's take a look at the recipe. You will absolutely love it. I want you to mix this up. If you don't have the ingredients, you know, I'm going to check in with you maybe next week or in a couple of weeks to make sure that you've mixed this up. Let me know how it's going. Hey, put a two in the comments if you've already made my toothpaste recipe. I know a lot of you have been here. You've been following me for a couple of years now, and you know that I shared this a little while ago. So put it to in the comments if you've actually made the recipe or if you're using this toothpaste already. But here we go. So the whole food calcium powder and of course the baking soda, the xylitol, the coconut oil and oh, I forgot. Oh my goodness. This is the best part is the essential oil. Yes. Yeah, so you can use either peppermint. I like peppermint because it gives you a minty. Um, taste to your, and of course you're not eating this, but I guess technically you could if you wanted to, but your, to your toothpaste, you're going to add in that essential oil. You can also use, you know, a nice one is cinnamon. So if you like sort of a cinnamon flavor in the mouth, that's very refreshing as well, but use the, I like the mint. The mint is great because it's like a conventional, you know, regular toothpaste kind of feel and flavor to help to freshen your breath as well. So 15 drops of that peppermint essential oil. And you're gonna mix all of that into a glass container and then you're just using a small amount, a pea sized amount on your toothbrush and of course, brush your teeth with it. You will love it. Some people use it, you know, maybe three times a week. Some people use it, this is their toothpaste every day. Totally up to you but store it in that glass container. Or of course you can purchase these little tubes. There you go. I hope you love this. Okay, did I have anybody who made it? Yes, Elaine has been making the toothpaste. Aren't you loving it, Elaine? Isn't it amazing? It is so, and Pink Crazy as well has been using the toothpaste and loves it. Um, it is amazing because it really does help to whiten the teeth. It helps to remineralize. It is fantastic for dental health. Your kids will love it as well. All right, we're at quiz question number three already. Is everybody ready? This is our final quiz question for today. Remember, you have the ability to win a prize. So this is from our great sponsors at Vitatree Nutritionals. Hey, this is what you need, actually. So you may win this. This is the Whole Food Calcium Powder from our great sponsors. We thank them for making the Dr. Janine Show possible in the first place. Are we ready, everyone? Here we go. Quiz question number three. True or false? Coffee usually has less fluoride than tea. Okay, if you're just tuning in now, you missed the fluoride little segment. Just do your best, true or false. Take a guess, there you go. You've got 25 seconds left. All right, 15 seconds left. Everybody get their answers in. Sherry, thank you. <laughs> There's a few Sherry's here. Hello, hello. Thank you for tuning in today. Great to have you here. All right, everybody got their answers in. I hope so. All right, before we reveal, hit that like button, hit that share button. Thank you so much for everybody who's tuning in right now. And thank you, Alma Scissor Soul Sister, for the follow. Amazing, amazing. Thank you for tuning in today. Remember, we do this every Tuesday at this time. All right. Are we ready to reveal? Of course, it is true. So whoever said true, congratulations. Hopefully you will be our winner, so make sure you tune in next week and that you're following Team Dr. J9. So I didn't mention that earlier. Follow Team Dr. J9. When you see Team Dr. J9 is answering some of your questions throughout the lives, that's the team. My team behind the scenes are helping, and I will of course announce our winner next week which is amazing so make sure you tune in next tuesday at and denise thank you for sharing today's live ravni thank you so much for sharing yeah tune in next tuesday at 11 a.m now make sure you do tune in tomorrow as well so we're going to have a quick q a tomorrow i'll be able to answer your questions that you had about today's show and we'll talk more about deuterium i'll give you sort of the lowdown on deuterium a little bit more and some more practical tips we'll do a little bit of a review of what we covered today if you're just tuning in right now so that is going to be great so just as a re recap really quickly we did talk about fake bottled water what to look for in a healthier drinking water as well as deuterium 
bacterium. We talked about fluoride toxicity, my, all of my tips to get that fluoride out of the body. So fluoride detox tips is something that we talked about as well today. And yes, you want to see the list? Okay. Okay, the fluoride detox list. Okay, let's pull that up really quickly for you. And in case you missed it, so how to get that detox and how to get that fluoride out of your system. Of course, healthy diet, so limiting things like grapes, which are, tend to be high in fluoride, remember, and um, wine, unfortunately, could be high in fluoride. Tea is also high, and, and coffee has less fluoride than, than the tea. Black tea and green tea, but herbal tea is okay. Um, curcumin, and we showed you some studies that it helps to complex out and, and chelate out that fluoride, stop your exposure, of course, as much as possible. Iodine helps to chelate out that fluoride. Calcium, really important. Magnesium, D3, and vitamin K2 should be actually here as well. Uh, organic coffee and, of course, herbal teas are all right. RO water, so reverse osmosis water and filtering the water for fluoride. A lot of water filters don't actually filter out fluoride, so it's something that you have to ask if you're buying a new water filter, if it takes the fluoride out. That's really important. Uh, full body detox, of course. And that third eye meditation, remember for that pineal gland, because that fluoride can sit in the pineal and calcify the pineal gland, and then your intuition can even be affected, that mind-body connection, really important, okay? So I hope that helps. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Everybody got it? Okay, thank you so much, everybody who is tuning in now, and you want to see the recipe for the toothpaste one more time. Let's pull that up really quickly. Here we go. So the whole food calcium powder. And of course, the baking soda, xylitol, coconut oil, and 15 drops of peppermint essential oil or any essential oil. Um, cinnamon is also great here for that remineralizing toothpaste recipe. You're just going to mix all of that up and use it as your toothpaste and of course, spit it out. Okay. Awesome, you got it all. Well, thank you to everybody who tuned in today. It was so great to have you all here. Make sure you do tune in tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll do a quick Q&A and I'll answer your questions if I wasn't able to get to you today. Thank you. You know I love you all. If I didn't shout you out, I will definitely do my best to do that next time. It was so great to have you all here today. Check out all my content and of course all my channels as well. I appreciate all the love and all the commenting that you do there as well. And have a great day, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, we'll see you then.